Oh, what a day it is. We're going to be talking about Square Stock, as we do. This one actually did end up trading in the morning, right? Uh, or reporting earnings in the morning, which is why you see a 7% growth um, as far as the stock's concerned today. And there's, I think, a pretty good reason for it. Uh, so we'll take a look at these earnings and see you know, what's going on with the 7% jump in this stock. Um, this is what we like to call in the industry, you know, in my industry, an earnings smasher. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get hype for this. <clears throat> non gap PPS of 18 cents beats by 22 cents. Gap PPS of negative 3 cents beats by 21 cents. <laughs> Slurp it up, baby. That's a good one. <clears throat> that is what I call a good, good report. And not only that, the revenue is what you're you're pretty excited about too. 1.92 billion up 64% year over year, beat by 790 million. You know, just a casual, you know, beat by nearly half of what the, you actually landed in total in terms of revenue. You know, just just do that for you. Why not? Um, so the shares naturally were excited. You know, investors were like, "This is a ridiculous earnings report. Let's go, let's buy in." Um, very good looking numbers for sure at the surface. You can't lie, but we got to dig deeper and get rid of these pop up ads. That's what we got to do. Um, so, Square, massive, massive number. Uh, uh, so, all mobile payments really, you know, reacted pretty happy. So, as far as uh, ETFs, just in general, very good quality there, as you see. People were very excited. Um, to see this, I mean, online, you know, mobile payments shot up. So as far as this uh, presentation is concerned, we'll dig into it. Here's a little eyeball on a card. You know, it's it's just an eyeball on a card, and there's two eyeballs on the ground there in the rock thing. This is a weird looking earnings presentation. Okay, it's a weird looking earnings presentation. Let's just get into the stuff we like to see. Something you may notice, um, looking at this chart is the astounding jump, astounding jump in terms of revenue. I mean, that's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful looking chart, beautiful chart. In fact, majority of these charts do look pretty beautiful. Gross profit, also looking beautiful, up 28% year over year, 597 million. You do like that. Um, net income, was an $11 million loss, if you're talking about a gap perspective. So, not the most beautiful, but the company has struggled with profitability quite a while. And, um, I'll give them a break because of the pandemic, okay? I'll give them a break. But, I'd like to see, you know, a little bit better. I'd like to see some profitability. Uh, you see in quarter one, they posted a negative number two. But, I'd like to see more profitability if they could. I could see it next quarter for sure. Gross payment volume was down, um... And that's not a shocker at all. A good portion of these um, transactions really get done through small business, which likely during this quarter were shut down for a majority of it. And overall transactions, you know, probably down. Not a shocker at all. Um, uh, GPV mix by seller size, uh, 52% from larger sellers is where they're getting their cash each, which is good because those are the ones that are for sure, consistent revenue earners for them, for sure. Um, I mean, I, I'm a huge fan of uh, small business. You know, I love me some small business, but there's sometimes, like right now, where small business gets devastated. And this is obviously their share, shareholder level. Um, shareholder letter. But uh, uh, very nice numbers is pretty much what they're going to say here. Engage network. They talk about Cash App being pretty nice, the ecosystem for Cash App. Uh, you can see, as far as the Cash App adoption here, um, Cash App monthly actives is at 30 million, and uh, Cash Card monthly actives is at 7 million. So, pretty nice for them. They're big on this as a financial service. Um, if you think about all the profit that could bring to them, there's definitely some potential for them as, as being a a bank type. I mean, think about it. <clears throat> this company turning into a financial service is just a, you know, it's a good natural progression. It's good for them. Very good for them. So, obviously, increased usage, pretty massive to see. Um, uh, let's see. 
Uh, in the second quarter, direct deposit actives were among the most engaged cash card customers and spent two to three times more than other cash card actives. That is right. Um, direct deposit people. So the people who put their money right into the cash card, they're spending money all the time. Well, what a shocker because they have more money in there. But, you know, I don't think that one needed to be said. Sorry, guys. Um, credit card spend is resilient. Um or cash card, as they mentioned, which makes sense. People are buying more merchandise, I think, than really ever. It's ridiculous. Um, as far as just general merchandise from, uh, look at a, a store like Walmart, Target, um, you know, growing sales massively. People are spending a lot online, but they're also buying in stores. So uh, you've seen digital sales increase massively for a lot of people. As far as online channels, um, you see from Q2 of last year, only 14% were from fourteen uh, percent uh, of their GPV was from online sales. Where this year it's greater than twenty five percent. Not a shocker because in the current ecosystem, uh, really a lot of businesses were forced to shift onto online. So therefore, a lot more online sales and just in general a lot more online sales. Um, uh, big focus obviously in con contactless hardware. Um, don't know where. What got, oh gosh, he's struggling. What got me Australian there? And I apologize for being Australian there for a second. Um, you know, I don't need to apologize. I can do whatever I want. But Contactless is pretty massive with their Square Reader platform. Just hold it out. Um, you know, obviously they have the... Uh, <coughs> using the uh, Contactless Square Reader. They have one that reads cards. They have Contactless that works for stuff like Apple Pay. Uh, or their cash app for sure. Pretty nice stuff. As far as financials, you see beautiful numbers here. Um, subscriptions and services based revenue was three hundred forty six million up in the second quarter, which is um, up thirty eight percent year over year. Good to see that. Just good numbers there from them. I mean, when you talk about good huge numbers, it's what they're posting right here. Um, I'm pretty proud of them. Uh, they achieved positive positive growth in card not present GPV, which was up 16% year over year. Um, driven primarily by strength from several of our online products, such as Square Online Stores, Invoices, Virtual Terminals, and e-commerce API. Money, 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 money. And they talk about, obviously, just a, just a lot going on with this company. And everything this offers... Um, this company's got a lot going for it. Operating expenses were up 33%. Um, and product development development was up as well, so that's certainly a part of it. Uh, sales and marketing was also up 52%, so you need to consider that as well. So this company was really working on outreach. So, therefore, this makes sense. You know what I mean? This just makes plenty of sense. Um, balance sheet and cash flow, they talk about it, but I definitely want to see it. Uh, if I can, I don't know if it, they have to have it on here because this is the shareholder letter, baby. And let's zoom in on this because I want, I want you guys to see it, okay? As far as assets are concerned, total current assets of $6.1 billion versus $3.2 billion of six months ago. As a company that went heavy on cash, not a shocker, um, because of everything going on. They needed cash on hand. Um, especially if you're a company not necessarily making profit, you need that money. My fear is obviously debt levels could rise. There's no doubt about it, but I'm hopeful not. So total assets in general of 7.8 billion versus 4.5. Nice to see that. Uh, total liabilities in general, okay, of 5.8 billion versus 2.8 billion. That's right. As I mentioned. It rose three billion to go along with the um, three billion that you rose in assets. Not a shocker. I mean, it's rare that you see that change. Total total stockholder equity did rise just a little bit by around two hundred million. I say that it's a little bit, but I'll take two hundred million dollars in my pocket right now if you let me. Um, so stockholder equity at one point nine million or one point nine billion versus one point seven billion. Balance sheet's looking good on this company. I can't lie. I would like to potentially see. Slightly more in terms of assets than um, your debt level right now. But I think I'm pretty confident with where this thing's sitting as far as the balance sheet. Now the concern for some people likely is going to come in the valuation of the stock. 
P ratio over 300, even higher after a quarter like this, uh, where they don't post profitability. So for this year so far, they're not profitable at all. Um, they're down quite a bit actually for this year in terms of money. Um, you know, it's 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 definitely something that you need to consider. I think the stock's overvalued. Just being fair with you, I understand the reason for investment, but I think the stock's overvalued when you're talking about since really its dip in March up 280 percent. I think that might be a little overvalued, and even on the five year, up a thousand percent. Not necessarily that makes it overvalued, but just I think the reaction of 280 uh, percent upwards in a matter of three months is a little much. It's a little steep. This stock's better for me around 60, and I know people think that's freaking insane, but if we're talking about profitability, I mean, come on now. It's trading in a market cap of $64 billion. Uh, when we're talking about annualized revenue, likely going to be around $6 billion this quarter or this year. So, all things considered, you're talking about a 10 times uh, the value in terms of market cap. Not awful, could be worse, but the P ratio just is not good to go along with it. Um, however you think about that, that's on you, but you know, hey, that's, that's my opinion.